quick fishing tip. Always keep an eye on the spider web. I'll give you a real immediate intelligence or information on what's going on. In this case, there's a sulfur done hung up in there and there's a whole bunch of light little tan midges in here. So probably a lot of the bugs are coming up here are tan midges, but you can see that there's a sulfur done. Can't really get a good shot on the camera of what's been hatching. Spider webs are always handy. Alright folks, a couple things. One, I apologize, it's a little breezy, so I'm gonna speak up. Hopefully everything can get picked up on the camera. And the wind noise won't be a problem on, on the audio. But I want to do a little fishing update, get everybody um, up to date on what's been going on. Other than the fact that we've been trout fishing and you can see the thanks for watching the trout videos. Um, I really appreciate that. But anyways, um, we got to, before I get into what's going on with the fishing, I do have a few announcements. Get them done first so everybody will listen to them and then you can, I'll give you the, what's going on with the fishing and a couple fishing tips. So first off, um, our spay casting clinic's coming up. And that'll be August 24th on a Saturday, August 25th on a Sunday. Uh, the classes run from 8 a.m. to noon. Um, the Saturday class and Sunday class, the two separate classes, so the same thing. It's a uh, five to one um, instructor to student, so we max it out at 10 students. And the cost is $125. It's on the Salmon River. We meet at the Compactor Access, which is the Route 2A access, just across the bridge at Route 2A on the Salmon River. Great spot to cast. So that's where we have the class, the clinic. We still have slots available for Saturday and we have a lot of slots available for Sunday. So the, if you want, and the comments below, when I do the little description, not the comments, the description below for this video, I'll put my cell number, just give me a call direct, get me an email. I always put the contact information on the end of the video so you can see where you can email us. Google me up, you'll find me. So I'm easy to find. Give me a call, send me an email, we'll get you into class. Um, there's still plenty of spaces available. Once again, that's um, the weekend of the 24th and 25th. And you can pick Saturday or Sunday, whichever class you want. This Saturday class still has some slots open. So that's the first thing. Second thing is, is we still got a bunch of prime dates available for salmon season. Uh, just a quick note, September 26th to September 29th has come open. Uh, those are great September dates. Uh, we will have salmon unless something horrible is going on. So that's, those are really good dates. Also got some prime dates in October for both salmon and steelhead. So get a hold of me, we can get you in the system. So we do have dates, for, you know, like I said, some, um, some prime dates left for October yet. So dates available if you're interested in doing the salmon fishing get on track. Moving along, um, those are the two real announcements we needed to get out of the way. What's going on with the, with the salmon fishing and the steelhead fishing? Uh, the word coming off the lake is interesting. I just heard rumors not too recently of a 37 pound salmon caught off of um, um, Sotus or somewhere in that area. That's ginormous for this time of year. Well, that's just ginormous period. The salmon are running big. The numbers seem to be good. Keep in mind, this year class is going to be could potentially be a challenge. Uh, these fish, of course, they have a three-year cycle out in the lake, and two of the three years have been on mild winters. So some of these fish never stopped growing. They grew right through the winter. So the potential of seeing a lot of fish in the upper 20s, and low 30s this year is, is very good. The other thing is, is the population seems to be good. We got a really good um, survival rate in this year class. So it's, it's the all the signatures in my broken eight ball, my foggy crystal ball um, says, yeah, things are looking good. Things are lining up for a good fall. We're even getting some really good reports on steelhead out there. Guys are catching a lot of incidental steelhead, which means that there's a fair, there should be a good stock of steelhead out there this year too. Hopefully, we can have a good steelhead season. The last few have been very challenging. So that's what's looking like out on the uh, migratory front um, for the lake. So things are shaping up in good shape and once again we do got dates for September and October. Just give us a call and we'll see what we can do for you. Um, as for the trout fishing, i um, been doing a lot of trout fishing here on my local trout stream today. Uh, we had a really hot spell and this trout stream I'm on has a lot of spring influence. So what I'd like to do when it's hot and with the spring influence, I like to do morning fishing. 
go out in the a.m. fish the mornings because that water will cool during the night even though it seems to be a hot night we'll get some cooling overnight the spring influence will take over and we'll get a nice cooling and we'll basically we'll fish until like right about now late morning early afternoon the old western version hood owl yeah we do the hood owl schedule so that's one thing you can do the other thing is is we are in late june so our sulfur hatches are winding down and what you'll see is right at dusk this time of year i mean no bugs no bugs no bugs and all of a sudden at dark you're just drowning in sulfur spinners we hit, and this particular creek and a lot of them, a lot of those sulfurs hatch at night. It just kind of gets warm, so they explode out at night. Sometimes you get the spinners, then you're lollygagging about 10 to 11 o'clock at night, you're choking on duns hatching. So a lot of your hatches go nocturnal, so they, so if you don't think the temperature's gonna be too much of a problem, just fish that late evening, that early to late evening period in the dark. You can get some action in that thing. It's just, um, that works really good. This particular creek we can get away with it because of all the springs in it. Some other water you might want to be a little bit careful to forego that and just like fish maybe nymphs, small streamers, little wet flies in the morning at first thing and, and just get what you can get until we get out of this heat wave. We're also probably in about two weeks off, three weeks off of the trichos. A bunch of our water even here I saw a few Cahills coming off so we're looking at Cahill hatches uh, just a little side note, George and I have been doing some um, a lot of fishing on some the big our big river where we put the fly crafts in and we can float. And um, there we're getting a lot of action with the wet flies. You might have just saw a, a recent little switch bay video I put up. We're working with little wet flies off my really cute little farm, which I'm going to be fishing with a four weight um, switch rod. We had some great action on that with. Um, swinging some wets so we've been doing doing a bunch of that um, a little side note if you're getting tired of the big rivers we want to go and float and have a chance for some big fish around the 20 inch class and you're getting tired of the, fi the fishing pressure they get a hold of us we're working on a piece of water where we can put the fly craft in big water minimal minimal um, fishing pressure we got a train going by minimal fishing pressure which is really nice that you don't have to deal with all the pro um, I mean it's we're probably floating oh probably give you an idea but the fish pressure is so light we're floating anywhere from a mile and a half to three miles of water and we're running out of time I mean there's just so much productive water that hasn't been harassed so we're having we've been doing some experimenting there's some, some fishing on that and finding some really nice um, fish a lot more streamer fish and mudfly, but anyways, at the dress. So that's kind of what's going on. Um, let me get done jammering and get back to fishing. Just once again, thanks a lot, folks, for um, watching the videos. I'm, a, I'm working on a on two videos right now. One is um, so some of the um, subscribers had left in the comments that like me to break down a piece of trout water and how I'd fish it and how I'd go about it. I'm going to be doing one of those. And I'm also going to be doing another little trout spay streamer video that I'm working on too. So hit that little um, that subscribe button down there and the bell icon. Just subscribe to the channel. That always helps. And hit the bell icon and that way you can see when I get those videos done and I get them posted and you can watch them. So once again folks, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. Um, spread those trout fishing videos around your buddies there. We get a, our traffic's kind of low during trout season and I want to um get to more trout fishermen and also in the comments if there's some type of video you want to see please please put it down we do listen listen to you um, sometimes we don't get to producing the video right away but we do get to producing those videos so thanks again thanks for watching thanks for subscribing thank you for your support and see you in the water folks this is jay at jpec guides and lost river fishing we are a year-round fly fishing catch and release guide service. We fish the Lake Ontario tributaries. And then during the spring and the summer, we also fish the inland trout streams, classic dry fly fishing. During the heat of the summer, we will do the warm water fishing for bass and pike. If you are interested in any of our islands or have any questions, please feel free to email us at fish at lostriversfishing.com. Hope to hear from you, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact us.